This video was brought to you by Squarespace. Hit it! That's what I'm talking about! Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. The year is 1816, and the world is in the middle of a revolution. The Industrial Revolution. Technology is accelerating, and Eddie's art is the steam engine, an apparatus that can power machines to do work, trains to travel on land, and boats to cross the ocean. The steam engine changed society forever, using high-pressure steam to produce enormous amounts of power that could literally move mountains. But that power came at a cost, because high-pressure steam, when poorly managed, tends to explode. And that is exactly what happened. The boilers used to turn the water into steam were not safe, and would many times explode and kill several people. In an attempt to solve this problem, a Scottish priest by the name of Robert Stirling developed a new kind of engine, that was safer, quieter and used air as its working fluid. It was an engine that worked with hot air, like a hot air balloon, but an engine. It was a hot air engine. Come on, you have to admit that is cool. Stirling didn't actually invent the hot air engine, but he developed several improvements that turned this engine into the prime rival of the steam engine. To understand the improvements that Stirling made, we first need to understand how a Stirling engine works, and to do that, let us first look at the ideal case, a scenario so perfect that can only exist on the wet dreams of a mechanical engineer. To that case, we give the name of Stirling cycle. This is a glass syringe. It's a type of syringe that was widely used in the 50s to administer intravenous medicine and vaccines. And this is its big sister. It's a 50 milliliter glass syringe that I have no idea what was used to administer. But I'll let your imagination do the work. Here I have a simple setup where I fix the cylinder of a glass syringe using a 3D printed clamp and close the cylinder opening using a piece of plastic tube. Which means that the air inside of the syringe is stuck. If I place a burner under the syringe, the flame will heat the air inside and raise its temperature, what inevitably also raises its pressure, because the temperature and pressure of a gas are in a love relationship and intimately connected, and that, my friends, it's gay. Lusak's Law Fortunately for us, this is not a monogamous relationship, but a love triangle that also involves volume. Because of the high temperature, the air starts expanding, what pushes the piston forward. The volume goes up and the pressure goes down. We reach the maximum the piston can travel, so it's time to revert it to its initial position. I will now remove the burner and let the air cool. The temperature will go down and as a consequence the pressure will go down as well. The air will contract and suck the piston back. A piston going back and forth? That sounds like an engine! Well, not any engine. This cycle describes the ideal Stirling engine and the area inside this shape represents the amount of heat converted to work. Real engines have a cycle that looks a little bit more like this. But anyway, to turn this into a proper engine we need to repeat this cycle several times per second, and to do so, we need to find a better way to intermittently heat and cool the air. Robert Stirling solved this problem with the use of a displacer piston, that moves the air between the hot side and the cold side. The displacer piston is connected 90 degrees out of phase to the working piston, and they are both connected to a flywheel. In the first part of the cycle, most of the air is in the hot side, what causes it to expand. This pushes the main piston forward. At a certain point, the displacer piston starts moving down and forces the air to the cold side, while the main piston keeps going. As the main piston reaches its upper limit, a big part of the air is now on the cold side. The temperature goes down and the air contracts what sucks the piston back down and compresses the air. This configuration is called the Beta Stirling engine, and is the configuration that Robert Stirling used in his machines. Another variant of the Beta configuration can be found on this model, which is called the Gamma Stirling engine. It's probably the most well-known configuration of this engine, because YouTubers love putting it on the palm of their hands to show how even with a very low temperature difference, the engine still runs. Another example of the Beta Stirling engine is on the car that appears at the beginning of the video. It uses a 5mm glass syringe as a power piston and marbles as a displacer. A burner is placed on the back of the car that turns alcohol into heat. The flame hits the air inside the syringe and the plunger moves forward, pushing the front wheel. 
This changes the angle of the engine and the marbles slide down, what displaces the air to the cool side. The air cools down and sucks the plunger. The syringe returns to its initial position and the cycle repeats itself. To build this car I used two 3D printers, the Not Jordan which is an FDM 3D printer that deposits melted plastic in layers and the Elon Mars which is a resin 3D printer and cures resin in layers using UV light. You don't really need a resin 3D printer to make this project, but they are nice to make smaller parts that require higher precision. For starters I 3D printed the front wheel and the back wheels in black PLA on the Not Jordan and removed them using a small cap that I had laying around. You can use a spatula. Next I 3D printed a simple part to hold the burner in black PLA and the chassis of the car in purple PLA to give it some color. To link the chassis parts together I 3D printed some pins in white resin that will also work as the axis for the wheels and the limiters for the engine. I also printed a clamp that will hold the engine and serve as the pivoting component. Resin parts normally need to be post cured and an easy way to do that is to put them in the sunlight. But to speed up the process I am using a nail curer that I borrowed from my sister. To turn it on you just need to click this button here and ta -da! To make sure everything runs smoothly I used 6mm ball bearings that look cooler than they actually are when falling in slow motion. The engine itself is made out of a glass test tube, a 5mm glass syringe and marbles. To make sure I would not have leaks I used rubber o-rings to insert the syringe on the test tube. It's important that the plunger from the 5ml syringe runs without friction and I read somewhere that you can lubricate it using a pencil since graphite has a low friction coefficient. That made sense at the time but it didn't work. To assemble the 3D printed part I used super glue. Lots and lots of super glue. I assembled the engine on the car and gave it a test. What? What? It's moving. Yes. It's working. It's really working. <laughs> oh god. I was feeling good from my small success, so I decided to build another type of Sterling engine. A more powerful one. The, the Alpha, Alpha Sterling, Sterling engine. engine! The Alpha Sterling engine is another configuration of the Sterling engine that uses two power pistons instead of one, which means that it's able to get more power for the same volume. I designed the engine to use two 10ml glass syringes. We have a flywheel support, a flywheel, the cranks, the connecting rods, the syringe adapter to link the connecting rods to the pistons and the syringe support. To add some inertia to the flywheel I plugged some M10 nuts to increase the weight on the outmost perimeters. Once again I printed some parts in plastic and some parts in resin. Because I didn't want to use screws as the axis of the engine I 3D printed them and used a fast locking system to hold them in place. As a base for the entire setup I used a big piece of wood. Well, I'm a liar, I'm a boozer, I'm a bastard and abuser. And I'm wondering how much slower can I go? I've been beaten, I've been bloody, I've been broken and betrayed. And I'm wondering how much Well, that didn't work, did it? Anyway, the important thing right now is not to panic or get sentimental. The last thing that I need is to get frustrated and start crying. Why did I think I could make the engine run? You're trashing tags, eh? You talk a lot about theory, but when it comes to making stuff, you're a loser. You can't even make the engine run. You should be ashamed. Why did you create the YouTube channel in the first place? Do you even 3D print, brah? I bet you the people watching the video still haven't subscribed yet. Or click the notification bell. Let's not even talk about leaving a like. Hey! I know what you're doing! Stop it! I'm just trying to help, bro. Disembodied voice out! Anyway, so, when you completely fail, the important thing is to relax and blow off some steam. What normally works for me is smashing some tomatoes. Why do you ask? Well... Hi, my name is Integza, and I believe that everyone should find their true purpose in life. Luckily for me, I found mine. 
I really enjoy doing the occasional science and engineering YouTube video, but my real calling, my true purpose in life, is to hate tomatoes. Now, I know what you're thinking. In Texas, another gag about hating tomatoes. Drop the act already. Well, guys, I'm not joking. I really f hate tomatoes. In fact, I hate them so much that I created a website fully dedicated to hating tomatoes. And I called it IHateTomatoes.com. In there, I post articles where I elaborate on the many reasons why you should hate tomatoes. I post pictures where I express my disdain for the pseudo-vegetable. And I also share videos where I hunt the devil's fruit. To build this page, I use Squarespace, a website building tool that enables anyone to create websites, blogs, and online stores. They have a wide range of templates and an easy-to-use set of tools with which you can create the best design for you. Thanks to them, I can now express to the world how tomatoes are a man-made food created by the Illuminati to exert mind control over humanity. If you also have something that you want to share with the world, or you just want to build a strong online presence, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can go to www.squarespace.com to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain. Now really guys, if you want to support my channel and for chance you want to build a website, please use the link in the description below. Thank you so much for the support. And I really hate tomatoes, it's not just a gag. Back to the video. Okay, now more relaxed, let us look at the problems that my first design had and try to solve them. The most important thing in this type of engine is the heat. It needs to be used in the most efficient way possible. In my first design I used syringes that have a metal tip and that is not good, because a lot of the heat is escaping the system through the air. I don't have any 10ml syringes without a metal tip, so I'll have to design the second version using 5ml ones. Another problem I think also affected the first design is the compression ratio. Because the ball bearings I used had a 13mm diameter, I had to build the crank with a 12mm radius, which means the total displacement of the engine is 24mm. That might be too much compression, what leads to the engine stalling? To solve that I used bigger ball bearings with a 15mm internal diameter for the flywheel so I can use a 3D printed main axis that will also serve the function of the cranks. A 2-in-1 deal, just like in the shampoos. I 3D modeled two holes in the main axis at a distance of 3mm and 4mm so I could have two different displacement distances in one engine. Another optimization that can be done is reducing the amount of air inside the engine. Less air means that the temperature gets higher in the system and that means it will expand more efficiently. In practical terms it also means that the displacement of the air will be smaller, but that's not a problem since I also reduced the diameter of the cranks. One important thing for the engine to run is to make sure the flywheel is able to spin freely for about 20 seconds. And I would know, I've built zero working Stirling engines so far. To make sure the flywheel runs with almost zero friction, I'll teach you an exclusive Intexa tip. You take the ball bearings, you remove the plastic cover, then the metal casing, apply some WD-40 and cha -da! The bearings jump out of place, because that is a terrible idea. Just make sure you apply some WD-40 on the bearings and you should be good to go. Don't do it while the burner is light up though. Apparently WD-40 is flammable. Who would know that WD-40 is flammable? Everyone! As a base I still use the big chunk of wood. Noise. Okay, sheeple, it's time to try the engine. I hope it works. Yes, give me all the heat. 
I should wait a little bit, right? The engine is moving. Come on, yeah. I think I'm also burning the two. I'm burning the two. I don't want to burn the two. Oh! Oh! It's working! Yes! Yes! Not very fast, is it? What? What? Ah, oh, the tube burned. The tube is completely burnt. I need to find a way to protect the tube. But it worked, right? Very nice. Very nice. The engine was running. True. But I needed to find a way to protect the tube. If I wanted to see the engine running for more than 30 seconds. My first plan involved using a piece of cork as a cover to protect the tube. But that didn't work. Apparently cork is flammable. Who would know? Okay, so what I'm gonna try to do is couple the tube with some thermic uh, sleeve. Uh, put them together and the thermic sleeve when it heats up normally shrinks so you should make it tighter Yeah, let's try that God damn it The tube fall off again My next plan was a little bit smarter. I used rubber tube with incorporated fiber that should withstand higher temperatures Oh my god, the tube is burning! It kind of worked, but the tube still got destroyed in the end. My final stroke of genius was to get a burner with a smaller flame. It doesn't really solve the problem, but it delays it enough that I can test the engine. Faster! Ah, uh, the tube is dead again. It was going so fast. Once again, the culprit of it stopping is the tube. This was probably the fastest speed the engine achieved. But I'm not sure, because I didn't measure the RPM. Sorry about that. I did measure the RPM in a test where the speed got very high. I calculated the RPM using slow motion footage and a marker. We have 4 rotations in 14.2 seconds, but because this is 32 times slower, it's actually 4 rotations in 0.44 seconds, which give us 9 rotations per second and 540 rotations per minute, which is not bad. Okay, so I have a plan to make the engine go faster and it's by using the economizer or regenerator and my plan involves this I don't know what you say it in English, I would call it like a dishwashing metal porous thingy yeah. Alright, I forgot to talk about the economizer which nowadays is called the regenerator The economizer is probably the most important improvement made by Robert Sterling is a component capable of storing heat that is placed in between the two cylinders, so the heat can be recycled instead of lost to the atmosphere through the cold cylinder. In my case I used pieces of what in English has the name of scoring pad. It's basically a metal sponge that is good at storing heat, but at the same time allows the air to go through. I placed bits inside the syringes in a way they would not interfere with the piston stroke. Okay, we have something. Houston, we have something! More and more, the regenerator is working! Conserving the heat in the system! We have ignition, we have the movement! I don't know how to sing, I'm just making shit up! Is this warming up again? Of course it is. Yep. 
My economizer plan didn't work very well. It's a shame, but you can't have everything, can you? Not at the same time. Well, if you want to 3D print either my Alpha Sterling engine or the Beta Sterling engine car, I'll leave the STL files in the description. If you're a patron to the channel, you will also receive the source files, so you can improve on the designs. I know not everyone has access to a 3D printer to try and replicate this project. And that's why in my last video I gave away a 3D printer to a Mr. Puddles. And here he is, 3D printing for the first time. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video and post a comment baptizing my hot air engine car. If this video reaches 200,000 views, I'll give away another 3D printer to the comment with the most likes. This is everything for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I should be going. I need to start working on my next project. Uh, see you soon guys and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!